All right, welcome everyone. Uh, in this video today, I'm going to talk about planning your pages uh, because first and foremost, uh, as a colorist, you really have to help tell the story uh, and this video should help you uh, better understand that part of the process. Hey there, my name is Kay Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and I do coloring tutorials, uh, tips, tricks, and technique videos on YouTube. So let's jump right into this one. Uh, this page is from the First Law of Mad Science mixtape anthology, which is a long name. Uh, but this short was written by Amy Chu, who's doing Poison Ivy uh, coming up for DC, and Isaac Goodhart, who you may know from his work on Postal for uh, Top Cow Image. But, um, so um, this page today, I, I want to talk about uh, really the first thing you should think about when you first start looking at a page is the storytelling. You know, how are you going to help clarify that line art and minimize what needs to be minimized and maximize what needs to be maximized and, and get people, get the viewers that are looking at these pages, uh, looking in the right places and getting the page to flow correctly. And and this is something that is commonly, I think, misunderstood and with with new colorists, especially myself included, uh, when I first started, uh, sort of a miss the forest for the trees uh, sort of thing here. So, um, and I'm just going to mark this up. Yeah, I got my trusty marker here. So, for example, in this page, we'll just go through this panel by panel. So, if this is a scene in a lab, this uh, whatever this is, experiment's gone wrong here, and we've got an explosion over here. We've got our uh, main characters right here in the middle, and then we've got some debris flying around uh, in his phone, which is also part of the story. So, um, And then in this panel, you've got the, uh, I guess this is right after the explosion, you've got the characters sort of on the ground here, and uh, you've got the debris laying around. And then he picks up his phone, we have this character in the background, and shows her the phone, and she's reacting to something on the phone. I won't give away the story here. but. Um, so what's important in this first panel here? Of course, the explosion and uh, the main characters here. Really, the the focal point uh, to a, to a lesser point, the the phone and and this debris here is really not important to the story uh, very much. But it's very big in the panel. So I, when I when I start coloring this, and I'll probably just do a time lapse uh, of the uh, recording here. But I'm going to make sure that I've got plenty of contrast and plenty of uh, really the brightest parts of the panel are going to be around the explosion these characters so I want to make sure that I'm using the most contrast here on these characters and maybe less contrast in some of the other parts of these panels and you know I may not hardly do any rendering at all or very little rendering on uh, all of these items here because I really don't want to draw your attention to it they're helping to frame the the characters here so I may just throw a flat color over that, make it dark so it sort of recedes visually, um, even though it's big in the panel, you know, so, um, you know, that's really your job as the colorist, uh, is to clarify what should be important in, in every panel and every page. Now in the second panel, and again, we've got our characters here uh, in, in this side of the panel, so, you know, I may do a little shadow maybe around the edge, sort of fading in so that uh, again your eye is pulled toward the center here where these where these characters are and, and when you're deciding you know what color should the smoke be you, know, you see smoke it's light it's dark you know that can help you determine the storytelling can help you determine what color things are how dark they are you know again if if I'm going to use my brighter colors and use contrast on on these figures here then I may use a darker color and it's sort of it's going to kind of frame again these characters here in this panel because if I, if I have a, a darker color on both sides then your eyes naturally going to sort of you know look toward the center and there's not as much going on in these last couple of panels but um, you know you've got the I want to make sure there's plenty of separation in this uh, part of the frame here let me get under the inks here um, to, to to make sure that we're we're separating foreground, you know, from midground, from background back here. I want to make sure there's plenty of contrast between those three, so that um, so that even though, for example, they're wearing the same gloves, 
you know, these are gloves back here. They're going to maybe less saturated. They may be a little lighter. There may be something that's going to indicate that there's some, some space happening between here. Um, same thing in this panel. Um, again, really going to kind of frame him with, uh, with her here in a, probably a darker color than, than I would in this panel where she is the focus. Okay. So, because what you don't want to do, and again, I was guilty of this when I first started, is think, okay, well, her skin is going to be the same color here and here and here. And it just may not be. I mean, some pages you may have the exact same color, but if it needs to be desaturated back here in order to, um, you know, help the storytelling, then it may be not be the exact same color. So, um, and I realize this may be a little advanced for some of you guys. So um, if you're looking for a more basic tutorial, um, there is a video I have, and I'll link it in the description, but it's, uh, it's called The Basics. Um, you can check that out if you're really just looking at getting started. Uh, this is really getting more. It's stuff you really need to understand, but um, from a technical standpoint, I know I didn't go into a whole lot of detail. So, so anyway, I'm going to jump in here and start working on this page, and then I'll catch you guys at the end.
we're back to real time here. So I'll um, go ahead and recap what we talked about at the beginning now that we've got the page done. So, so like in this first panel, even though the central characters here are really the smallest thing in the panel, you got the explosion, you got the uh, debris over here, uh, there's still a lot of contrast. Really the brightest part of the panel is right there. So it's telling you, look, you know, here's what's important. You know, same thing here. Um, you see the ground below them is a little bit lighter. I kind of, there's a little bit of shadow around these corners like I was talking about. And of course, we've got the smoke that's a little darker than they are helping to frame it up here. And you may have noticed a couple of times during the video that I switched to black and white. And I've talked about this, I believe, in other videos. But if the page works in black and white, uh, it probably works in color. You know, if you, uh, when you're looking at it just in the grayscales, you can see here, you know, this is still the brightest thing in the panel. There's still the most contrast here, and there's still the brightest things in the panel here. Same thing on these panels uh, here below. So uh, that's one trick you can do. And what that is, that's just a, a color mode layer filled with black. So you can turn that off and on. And it's an easy way to check your values, especially when you've got colors that are different hues. It can sometimes be tough to tell for example, if uh, you know if her suit is darker than the floor or lighter than the floor and that kind of thing, so it kind of allows you to, to toggle that and see, you know, if the page still works and the values all work because uh, values again really really important uh, to the storytelling to get your eyes looking at the reader's eyes I should say um, moving around the page the way that they should. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Thanks so much for watching. If you'll check the description, uh, you'll find I, I do have links to uh, some other videos down there. My basics video I mentioned earlier, so if this was a little too much for you, uh, check that one out. Uh, if you want a little bit more, uh, or a lot more detail actually in coloring in general, I do have links to my coloring course down there at the bottom as well with a coupon code for those that are coming from YouTube. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.